If the Rebbe said my Marm in Yiddish, why are they written in Hebrew? The, the simple and first level of the answer is because this is what the Rebbeim chose to do. Beginning from the Mittal Rebbe, the Mittal Rebbe, the Machsedek Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, that means five. And the seven Rebbeim, the Siyam of Chabad, wrote their own Chassidus. And they spoke in Yiddish and they wrote in Hebrew. Now in the case of the Alter Rebbe and our Rebbe, you have Takakashi. But on our Rebbe, it's not such a question. You'll simply say he was following the pattern. Since the Rebbeim before, my modern were spoken in Yiddish and written in Hebrew. When the Hanochas or the Maimodim were made, they were made in Hebrew. And parenthetically, there are a few Maimodim of our Rebbe in Yiddish that are actually Mugge. In the Kutasich as Chelek and the Isophis from the winter of Tavshech of Hay, you have Maimodim that were printed as parts of the Sicha, of the Fabreng. And you can see Maimodim of our Rebbe in Yiddish. A few people don't know this. A few Maimodim of the Rebbe in Yiddish. Maimodim Yiddish from Tavshech of Hay from the Rebbe. But the presumption is, since by all the Rebbe, they spoke in Yiddish and they wrote in Hebrew, so this is how it's by the Rebbe as well. In the case of the Alter Rebbe, this is what the Alter Rebbe wanted. And um, it's in the Rebbe's Rishimis, where the Alter Rebbe was very particular about Lashon Arav. He wanted they should write what he says exactly. And I've told this to you before. My modem of Chesidus Chabad has terrible grammar, terrible grammar. Because my modern of Chesidus Chabad have Yiddish grammar rather than Hebrew grammar. And Yiddish is a language which is full of double negatives. You don't say nein, you say nisht yes. Nisht faran, yeah? Norva den, el arak. These are all double negatives which are totally incompatible with the Russian laws of Diktuk and Russian HaKodesh because the Hebrew is actually Yiddish translated. That's how the Alter Rebbe wanted his my modern transcribed. He spoke in Yiddish. And he wanted his manichem to write word for word what he said. Not to write a Hebrew version of what he said, but to write in Hebrew what he said in Yiddish. So the manichem of the Alter Rebbe, and the previous Rebbe says there were five. The Mittal Rebbe, the oldest of the Alter Rebbe's sons, Reb Moshe, the youngest of the Alter Rebbe's sons, the Rebbe Leib, the Maril, the Alter Rebbe's brother, the Rebbe the Tzemach the Alter Rebbe's grandson, and the Pinchas Reizes. And it's written that the Pinchas Reizes was the most precise in this Indian, more than the others even, to write Lashon Haraf. And he wanted that they should write what he said in Yiddish exactly in Lashon HaKadosh. And I'm figuring that when the Mittler Rebbe wrote his own Chassidus, he wrote it in the same, in the same diktuk, it's Yiddish diktuk in Hebrew. And the Rebbe's Rishimus, you should know that it's brought that the Rebbe Aaron Strachele wanted to write my modem. And he wasn't careful about this Loshon Harav. And the Alter Rebbe was not happy at all. He punished him several times. And at the end, was he stopped coming to Liadi because of this Indian of Loshon Harav. So this is the choice of the Rebbe. Why? So this brings to another issue. And the answer to the question is very simple. And there's two parts to it. Loshon Teira Besvasa Teira. Divrei Teira written in Loshon HaKadosh because Loshon HaKadosh is Kadosh. It's holy. Bechlal Chedushe Teire, you know, there's people who, when they speak Divrei Kodesh, speak in Lashon HaKodesh, they speak Divrei Chel, they speak in a different language. Or there's people who are careful on Shabbos, they speak only in Lashon HaKodesh, because it's a Yom HaKodesh. It's a holy language, and the Teire should be recorded in the holy language. So the fact that the Teire Bechlal of most G'deli Yisrael is written in Hebrew makes sense, right? We know of, of great exceptions, like the Rambam Vesayate, the Rasag, who wrote in the language of the people. But Azoi, as a rule, Teir is written in Lashon HaKadosh because it's Teir HaKadosh in Lashon HaKadosh. And I just want to make a reference that the Ramban in the beginning of Bajas Kisisa, when he speaks about Shekel HaKadosh, brings up also Lashon HaKadosh. And he brings that Rambam and he refutes it and he argues with him. But you get to see a whole discussion on what Lashon HaKadosh is. And of course, more recently, because of the modern state of Israel and even before that, the Zionist movement, where the Rabbeim, the Rebbe Rashab, has letters about the, 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 the chilo, the transgressing, the contamination of the holy tongue, that people who are very secular are using Lashon HaKadosh for a secular form, and that the Rebbe was very happy that they created modern Hebrew and modified or adulterated or perverted the language, so at least they're not speaking Lashon HaKadosh, because Divri Kadesh are spoken in Lashon HaKadosh. So that explains why it's written in Hebrew. Why would they speak in Yiddish? So, of course, the beginning of this is a, a note 
in Tanya, that Neger is Kedish Chafei in the 25th epistle of Tanya, which begins um, with, um, to explain the Tehidus HaBal Shem Tev on the, from the Tzavas HaRivosh on the Indian of Kol HaKeyes Ki'ilu Eved Aved Azara so the Misnagdim read what the Baal Shem Tev writes in Tzavas HaRivosh about this Tehidus and the impression that they got was that the Eved there is revealed in Klippa that in Klippa Lekus is Behiz Galos and the, the Loshen in the Sefer is Hashra so the Al Tereb has a long letter defending this Tate of the Baal Shem Tev. And he says it's a mistake, it shouldn't be Hashra, it should be his Slapshus. And that the person who wrote it was Loy Dok, was not particular. Ki Abal Shem Tev Hayo Eimir Tera Beis Lamid Aleph Dafke, which means Abal Shem Tev Hayo Eimir Tera Belosh in Yiddish Dafke. And because he spoke in Yiddish, he must have used a Yiddish word which can be interpreted in Hebrew as his Slapshus. It could be interpreted in Hebrew as Hashra. And because the wrong word was used, there was Taka Bikash on that Yigar Sakhedesh, on that Maimir, and the Alter Rebbe corrected it by saying that it should really be his lapshas. So, how Gufa Kashe, if a person says Tate in Lashon Yiddish, and then a mistake had come, and the mistake they were going to start screaming, why didn't he speak to Afghan Yiddish? The Rebbe spoke about this many times. Because Yiddish is a mamutza between the Chmein Nidfan and Chumash and in Chazal, the idea of translating the Tate into different languages. Translating the Tate in different languages in Loshna Chasidis is the difference between Evan and Levena. Loshna Kedish is like natural stone, and the other languages are like bricks, man made stone. You're using other words, other letters to speak. And it's called a bitter. You bring godliness to a lower level of worldliness, and you accomplish something as far as the purpose of the creation is concerned. So the world was created with Loshna Kedish. Loshna Kedish is the source of all languages. And Yiddish is a Mamutse is an in-between, the Holy Tongue and other languages. Because it's called the Yiddish Golus Sprach. It's a Jewish language of the exile. And of course this is true also of the Ladino that the Sfardim speak. And I think also the French that Rashi has. It's a Yiddish Golus Sprach. It's a language used in Golus. So it's lower than Lashon HaKadosh, but it's been elevated and halified by the virtue of the Jewish people speak in this language. And the Rebbe spoke in Yiddish Davke to bring a Lakus to the world. That's what the Rebbe said many times. So therefore there's a logic to the Rebbe's writing in Hebrew. Loshan Divrei Teireh but Loshan Teireh and speaking in Yiddish Davke to bring a Lakus into, uh, into the world at large. right? And this of course explains why you also have Verte B'Loshen Jargon. Even in the Maimah you sometimes have Yiddish words or even words in different languages, like you have in Chumash, Yegar Sahadusa, and then you have whole Prakim in Daniel, and in Ezra Nechemia, which are written in Arami, and the whole Sturim. It's all about bringing godliness to a lower level.